Where, where were you when you heard that President Trump was shot? And then what were like your immediate actions, response to that as director? I was uh, about to have dinner with family um, and I was horrified and angry. I, I'm just thinking, the, the reason I asked the question is because I'm thinking, I'm still trying to figure out kind of the lanes, be, what the FBI would respond to and what the Secret Service has the responsibility to respond to. Can you just kind of cover that again? Sure. So the FBI uh, is not responsible for, has never really been part of our mandate or mission for the physical security of venues, of specific protectees or anything like that. That's, if it's, a, if it's somebody within Secret Service's scope, that's their mandate and mission. Uh, we are a law enforcement and intelligence agency, and so if you think about it this way, we're the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We're not the Federal Bureau of Security. You might say, well, what's the difference? Well, there is a difference. Uh, we investigate crimes. We investigate threats to national security, but we don't, questions about security posture, the adequacy of uh, resources and assets that were deployed to protect a specific individual, whether there's enough security, and certainly the staffing of that security is not something the FBI, uh, again, we're 116 years old, has historically done. So at this point, um, ha have you been able to go through the shooter's home and, and kind of document kind of what, what you found as far as evidence goes? So we, we have been able to search the shooter's home. So again, just sort of tying your first question to your, to your second question now. You know, our role is to conduct an investigation of the shooter and the attack. And so we're going to conduct a painstaking, intense investigation of that. We have, among other scenes that we've processed using evidence response teams, uh, in addition to the rally scene itself, of course, we have been through the individual's, the shooter's home. Uh, his bedroom, the other parts of the house, et cetera. Have you been able to establish that he did go to a range and either zero that weapon in or, you know, at least target shoot that weapon prior to the assassination attempt? So uh, we do uh, assess that he went to a shooting range the day before, not the only time he went to a shooting range. He was a fairly, um, I don't know, avid might be a little strong, but a fairly avid uh, you know, shooting hobbyist, uh, and so he went to, you know, belong to different sort of clubs and, and went to certain ranges and that kind of thing. We do uh, believe, based on what we've seen so far, that he went to a shooting range uh, the day before and that he shot uh, uh, an AR-style AR rifle at that range the day before. I, I'm not sure we know for sure that it's the, the weapon that he used, but I think we assess that it probably is. Have you been able to uh, interview his parents? Uh, yes, we have. And was there anything that was gained from that interview that would lead you to believe that they certainly were aware of what was going on? Uh, I would, uh, I guess I want to be careful about talking about specific people's interviews, but I would say that his parents were cooperative with us. And as I've said before, and hopefully this gets at your question, we have not identified any accomplices, co-conspirators, uh, or anything along those lines. Um, so it's the FBI's position right now that he still acted independently. Again, we're still, I know it seems right. like a lifetime since right. July 13th, but we're still early stages, but we have not seen anything so far that would suggest to us that he acted with others. How does the FBI view not just a Trump rally, but political rallies versus other types of events, uh, you know, from a security perspective, uh, compared to a college football game or any any mass you know large crowd type gathering because I can't I think the one of the things that's most difficult to really um, to swallow at this point is that the the idea that these Trump rallies have been happening for years and that there there could be such a lax approach to the physical security of those fairgrounds that day and I'm wondering it, you know where does this fall? And then on top of that, that there were other presidential candidates out there that didn't have full Secret Service protection. RFK Jr. has been the most vocal about it. I was wondering if you could comment on the, on the facilities as well as providing security for presidential candidates. 
Well, again, I want to be a little bit careful to stay in my lane because, again, security posture and the adequacy of the security posture uh, is, is really the core expertise and responsibility of agencies like the Secret Service. But uh, certainly it is, I think, fair to say that uh, outdoor events, whether they're political rallies or, as you say, you know, a college football game in an open stadium, a concert, uh, these are places that are... Uh, often, you know, particularly challenging to secure adequately uh, because the range of threats that can face them are, are higher. Uh, in addition to that, as been, has been discussed a little bit here uh, already in, in today's hearing, just threats to public officials, including politicians, uh, is an increasingly uh, pervasive part of today's landscape. And so that adds to the challenge. So you're talking about the combination of um, uh, individuals who are uh, increasingly targeted for violence combined with uh, venues that are uh, softer and harder to secure uh, targets, I guess is the way I would answer. But again, the, those kinds of questions, the adequacy of the security posture, uh, all the resources that were or were not devoted, all that stuff is my understanding would be very much in scope for the uh, DHS Inspector General uh, investigation and this outside independent panel that's been appointed. I yield back. 